Hello everybody! My name is Jack Pittman and I've lived in Nicaragua for over four years and this course has everything that I've learned. If you want to navigate then check out the timestamps. Each section is between one and two minutes and is specific to the title, okay? Welcome to the index page. Pause the video and find the topic that you want to watch and then go exactly to the timestamp of that topic. What countries can visit Nicaragua? In this first section, I'll talk to you about the countries that can visit Nicaragua. You'll find the visa policy of Nicaragua page on Wikipedia very useful for this. Let's scroll down and I'll show you this map. You can see that in this map of the world, there are green countries, blue countries, and then basically gray countries, all right? The green countries can visit for visa-free access, so they can just come to Nicaragua and pay for a tourist card when they get here. They don't need to go to an embassy. The blue countries basically also can just come to Nicaragua. The only difference is instead of getting a tourist card, they actually get a visa, whereas the other countries, you just get 90 days upon entry. You don't actually get a visa, even though it's basically the same as a visa. Don't worry too much. Basically, if you are in one of these green countries or one of these light blue countries, then you can just come to Nicaragua and deal with your paperwork at the airport. You don't need to do anything else prior, aside from COVID tests and all that bullshit, right? However, if you're in one of these gray countries, then in order to visit Nicaragua, first you need to go to the Nicaraguan consulate or embassy in your region and get a visa. And then you can travel into Nicaragua, okay? Basically, the whole world can visit Nicaragua with very little restrictions. Um, Nicaragua isn't a country that's worried about foreigners coming into the country and not leaving which is kind of ironic. <laughs> COVID restrictions. The government in Nicaragua has not enforced any restrictions since the pandemic started. Pressure from the private sector has made people adopt mask wearing because wearing a mask is necessary in order to enter any business in the city. It's also likely that your hands will be sprayed with alcohol and your temperature could be checked before you enter. You'll also see social distancing signage and notice a lot of people wearing masks, particularly on buses and crowded places like the market. In rural areas, it is significantly less common and often you won't need to wear a mask in order to enter a small business. Within Nicaragua, you need to pay $150 every time you get a COVID test. And in order to leave the country, you will need to pay $150 to procure a negative COVID test result. When you are entering the country, you can have a test result from anywhere else. This requirement still exists even if you are vaccinated. Vaccination does not change anything. Vaccine availability. Vaccination is totally voluntary in Nicaragua. As of January 2022, vaccination is available for free regardless of age or residency status. Minsa health workers may come to your door and ask if you want to get vaccinated. They are trying to find anybody who is willing to get vaccinated. If you say no, they will respect you. I personally had people come to my door and ask me for a COVID vaccine and just instinctually said no because I was used to people selling me stuff. And then I realized they were actual government workers and they were giving people COVID vaccines and I got vaccinated. If you choose to get vaccinated, they'll ask you for an identification or cellula and they'll write down your name and date of birth and give you a vaccination card. The vaccination card serves mostly to remind you when to get your next dose and to prove to other people that you've been vaccinated. Uh, Nicaragua rarely requires vaccines. You're not going to need to show that you got vaccinated to enter a building or have a job or anything like that. The only required vaccinations for
for people in Nicaragua is for the health workers themselves. Cordoba and dollar currencies. As of January 2022, one US dollar is equal to about 35 Cordoba. Many businesses will show their prices in dollars, and the dollar is almost always accepted everywhere in cash. However, in some situations, people will refuse dollars, usually because they fear that the 20s could be counterfeit. For this reason, most people do not accept 50 or $100 bills. So you can use Cordoba, $20 bills, $5 bills, and $1 bills. In some situations, it's necessary that you pay in Cordoba. For example, if you're paying a utility bill such as water or electricity, you must pay in Cordoba. However, most Nicaraguans like large payments such as rent, vehicle purchases, and land to be processed in dollars. So for your everyday purchases, you'll use Cordoba. But for the big purchases, you'll usually use dollars. And normally when you use dollars, you'll get Cordoba as change. You should get very comfortable converting the currency in your head because if you can't convert it quickly, people will try and take advantage of you by giving you less change. This happens a lot more when you look distracted and you're making a purchase in a known tourist area. This kind of thing is very common. The inflation of the Cordoba is very consistent. If you're watching this video in 2025, then the Cordoba should be around 40 Cordoba per dollar. However, given the situation with the dollar and COVID, uh, who knows, this might actually change. It's actually inflating the same rate as the dollar right now. Believe it or not, the Cordoba at this moment is inflating less than the dollar, which is very weird because the Cordoba is linked directly to the dollar, right? Speaking Spanish. Nicaraguans love it when you speak Spanish. If you try to speak Spanish to them, it makes them feel recognized and they love it. Most Nicaraguans are happy to hear you trying to speak their language. It usually makes them feel quite good, even if you say things wrong. That being said, you don't need to be fluent in Spanish to live in Nicaragua. You will catch up and absorb Spanish very quickly once you start living here, unless you're only living in an English-speaking area, but really, that's kind of hard to find. Each city in Nicaragua requires a different level of Spanish. Some areas have English speakers and signage everywhere, particularly tourist areas, while other areas don't have a single English word in sight. Tourist areas such as San Juan del Sur and Leon all have an English presence. You can find English speakers in these areas relatively easier, easily. However, in Managua, there is very little English presence. Most of Managua is entirely in Spanish. Cleanliness of water. In general, tap water in Nicaragua in the city is very clean you can drink the water in the city. However, you should use bottled water when you are traveling or when you are in rural areas. This is mostly because of the consequences of having diarrhea while you are traveling. You really want to avoid that. However, when you're not traveling, it's really fine to just drink the tap water. It's not gonna make you sick. However, the street food you buy, this may make you sick. Buying cookies that they sell in buses, that can make you sick. Buying any kind of food sold by people in crowded bus areas has made me sick. So that's how I've gotten diarrhea, not so much the water. And I drink the tap water regularly. You have to understand that a lot of water in Nicaragua is stored in tanks. So it may be clean, when it's first acquired, but if it is stored in a tank that is not maintained, is leaking, or is accessible to the elements, it can get dirty. And because of this, even though the tap water is clean, you might not be consuming tap water. You might be consuming stored water. So keep all of these things in mind, and if you have any doubts, just use bottled water. There's plenty of places to buy bottled and bagged water here in Nicaragua. 
Access to clean water. The water goes out more frequently than the power. Many regions in Nicaragua only have clean water access at specific times during the day, and it's common for water to not work during the early afternoon. This is usually because of the agricultural industry pulling water during the work hours of the day. As a result, water is almost always available at night once businesses and farms have stopped working and everybody's home. Water pressure will change throughout the day. Most pressure is the highest at night, and it can drop to almost nothing in the middle of the afternoon. This can cause problems for your washing machine, as they usually need a high pressure in order to function well. For this reason, most Nicaraguans use washing machines at night or in the early morning, although a lot of them don't have washing machines. Sometimes one person in the neighborhood will have one, and all of the neighbors will pay that person to wash their laundry. You'll need to keep some water stored, uh, because if you live in the city, you'll be fine if you just have like 10 gallon jugs that you fill with tap water when you have it. But if you're in a rural location, you're going to experience longer water outages, so you'll often need to have one of those big, big tanks that's stored high up in the air so that you can have water when it's not available. Water bills and payment. The government-run water company in Nicaragua is called Anacal. Typical water bills for two people are around 400 to 600 gorlaba per month. However, water is more expensive in certain neighborhoods and less expensive in other neighborhoods. In wealthier neighborhoods, you might pay around 700 or 800 gorlaba per month, almost double what you might pay in a cheaper neighborhood. To pay the bill with cash, you'll need to take it to a bank or a store such as AMPM. You can also pay these bills online if you use a Nicaraguan credit card or a debit card. <laughs> these convenience stores such as AMPM and Super Express allow you to pay bills, uh, but you have to use Cordoba in order to pay them. You can't pay with an international card or with dollars. So if you have those, you'll have to withdraw Cordoba or convert the dollars into Cordoba to be able to pay the bills. Water bills are often in landlords' names, but paid by the tenants. If the water bill is not paid, then the water company will come and cut the water supply within one to three days of the due date on the bill. Dealing with problems with water bills is incredibly time consuming, and it is usually very hard to get any kind of results from the company. You're normally better off just paying the bill. Eating local food. In Nicaragua, most of the population eats food prepared in their own homes or in the home of a nearby Nicaraguan. Many Nicaraguan people have family members with fruit trees or farms, and Nicaraguans often show their love for one another by distributing food from their land to their families. The locals in Nicaragua pay significantly less for food than foreigners do. In fact, locals often get food totally for free from friends and family. The ingredients that Nicaraguans eat are plentiful and cheap. Over time, you will learn to love the flavors that these foods bring. Tomatoes, plantains, avocados, mangoes, beans, rice, all available for less than 20 cordoba per pound. Grilled chicken, pork, pork or beef is available every night from your local fritanga. Provided you are willing to work with Nicaraguan ingredients, you'll find that food is often available and usually much cheaper than you would expect. If you are a person who wants to control your diet, then it's quite easy to get just produce. Nicaragua is a country that's friendly to vegans and raw food people. $3 Grilled Fritanga Dinners Fritanga is grilled street food in Nicaragua. It's a whole meal. In general, fritanga consists of your choice of grilled meat, gallo pinto, and cabbage salad. Many fritanga also offer some kind of fried cheese as well. You might find grilled plantain or plantain chips in addition. Usually the grilled portion is beef, pork, or chicken. And many fritanga also sell canned beer of the Tonya and Victoria brands. 
In any Nicaraguan town, you can walk the streets around 5 p.m. and find a fritango with nothing but your nose to guide you. The smell of grilling meat is the advertising of most fritanga. Fritanga usually costs 50 to 120 Cordoba, but usually around, around 100 is a, is a more accurate price point. This is affordable for most Nicaraguans, and it's common to buy a fritanga dinner for as little as $2.30. Beer usually costs around 70 cents per can, or around 30 Cordoba. So you can have a dinner in Nicaragua with a beer for $3 in almost any town. Drinking alcohol. Consuming alcohol is extremely common in Nicaragua. People here tend to really like to party. It's generally acceptable and normal to consume cigarettes and drink beer over the age of 15 up until death. Beer and liquor is abundant and almost always accessible. The cheapest form of alcohol in Nicaragua is something called hoita, and uh, it's, it's got a bit of a reputation, let's say. This is the form of liquor that you find people just drinking in the street, you know, and you'll often see it littering in the streets as well. There are a few national beers and liquor that are really common in Nicaragua, and some of them are very well made. Tonya and Victoria beers are available even in the most rural parts of Nicaragua. Flor de Caña is a Nicaraguan rum made from sugarcane. This liquor is available cheaply in Nicaragua and in most places, but it's not as widely available as Tonya and Victoria beers. You can find Tonya and Victoria branded bars everywhere in Nicaragua. Even small rural areas have their own bars. You'll almost always be able to find a bar or a church nearby. These bars have plastic tabletop setups and focus on selling beer. Sometimes they also sell food, but not always. It is usually possible to get a deposit on a $40 or 40 ounce bottle of beer if you give them an empty bottle. So the cheapest way young Nicaraguans usually drink beer is by gathering up the big, big 40 ounce bottles that they've used already and getting them refilled. It's green and economic. Dry and rainy weather seasons. Nicaragua has a dry season and a rainy season. In general, the first half of the year is dry and the second half of the year is wet. That being said, the wet season actually starts in November with October usually being the wettest month. Temperatures vary from 75 to 95 in Fahrenheit or 20 to 35 in Celsius. The dry season is hot and dusty, sometimes windy, while the wet season has frequent rain, which usually cools things down. Surfers prefer to visit during the rainy season or before October. This is when the swells and waves are at their strongest. The beaches are usually full of people here in Nicaragua during the dry season in the summer because most Nicaraguans have a whole week, sometimes two weeks off, during April for Easter. During this time, it is typical, and traditional almost, to go to the beach. But many Nicaraguans love going to the beach for any occasion. Foreigners don't take showers. Anda bañate. It is a running joke among Nicaraguans that foreigners don't take enough showers. This is actually rooted in some truth because a lot of tourists come, con come from countries with cold climates where showers might only happen once a day. In Nicaragua, it's totally normal to have a shower three, four, sometimes six or seven times in a day. Showers are an important part of staying cool in the hot Nicaraguan climate. You might hear a passing Nicaraguan yell, anda bañate, which means, go take a shower. They are usually just joking and having, having a good time, but maybe you do smell so much they can smell you from their car. Staying cool in the heat. You'll need to learn some habits in order to stay cool. Keep multiple bottles of water in the freezer and in the fridge. This means you'll always have access to cold water. You will have to have a fan on you at all times during the day in many places. Cold water, regular showers, and a fan will keep you cool during even the hottest parts of the year. 
It is not uncommon for Nicaraguans to take multiple showers a day to cool off. A proper building design will also make it easier to stay cool. Ceilings should be slanted and allow air to escape through a central courtyard. Air should be able to flow freely through the house, so less walls, more windows. Plants can be used to absorb sunlight and trees can offer enough shade to reduce internal temperatures by up to 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Wading pools also allow people and guests to keep their bodies cool for events and gatherings. Personally, I recommend that you avoid using air conditioning. When you rely on air conditioning, you become even more bothered by the heat, and there's no escaping it. Considering the heat is part of daily life, it's all the more unpleasant in the long run when you can't handle it. I really encourage you to consider getting used to these habits I mentioned instead of just air conditioning. Traveling inside Nicaragua. There are essentially three options to travel from town to town within Nicaragua. Bus, shuttle, or taxi. Buses are very cheap, usually 5 to 30 Cordoba per person traveling to another town. But you will be traveling with a lot of people on the bus. Shuttles are basically vans that hold a smaller amount of people than buses do. Going to another town in a shuttle is usually 70 to 140 Cordoba, whereas a bus would be much cheaper, sometimes as little as 5 or 10 Cordoba. Shuttles are more expensive, but you don't have to deal with as many people. Taxis are by far the most expensive way to travel, and a trip to another town will usually cost a foreigner 700 Cordoba or more, $20. Traveling by bus or by shuttle is usually quite safe as long as you take precautions. If possible, travel without a backpack. Bring only what you need, and if you do have a backpack, you must pay close attention to it. Many Nicaraguans will put their backpacks on the front of their body instead of behind them for this reason. Remember to pay attention to your body language, look alert, and be aware of your pockets when you're in crowded situations. Taxi safety guidelines. In the city, you'll be minutes away from a taxi at essentially any given moment. In rural areas, taxis must be arranged ahead of time. You cannot rely on finding a taxi in rural Nicaragua. Nicaraguans usually prefer to use taxi drivers that they know and trust. And the cheapest taxi price for a local is usually around 40 Cordoba per person. This will get you a couple blocks away. A more expensive taxi ride is closer to 100 Cordoba. Taxis usually charge per person. This means that a taxi will cost twice as much with two people compared to one, even though the distance is the same. Taxi drivers will charge you more in a few situations. You look foreign, you're at the entrance of a wealthy mall or a business, you're dressed nicely, your destination is in a wealthy area, or you have groceries or luggage, you're traveling with multiple people. And actually, taxi drivers will charge you less sometimes. And these situations are when you know the taxi driver already or know their family in some way, or the driver is already traveling towards your destination and is gonna go there anyway. InDriver is an app that became popular in Nicaragua because it allows you to choose how much you are willing to pay and there's a bit more accountability than using taxis. Apps such as Uber and Lyft do not exist here in Nicaragua. So if you want to do this and you want to use an app to find a taxi, then you need to use the app in driver. Cars and motorcycles. The vast majority of Nicaraguan families do not own a car, but some might own a motorcycle. Most cars are taxis or job vehicles. Motorcycles are significantly more common. For this reason, the streets usually have a large amount of motorcycle traffic. You must wear a helmet or you will eventually get pulled over, despite how many people you see not wearing helmets. Foreigners can drive vehicles on a foreign driver's license as long as the driver's license is not expired. However, foreigners cannot own a vehicle in Nicaragua, 
Vehicles must be registered to a local Nicaraguan resident, so most foreigners here would register a vehicle in their spouse's name. Driving in the city. Rotandas, or roundabouts, are the standard intersection in Nicaragua. You'll see traffic police directing traffic at busy intersections more often than you'll see traffic lights. And U-turns are usually illegal. You're expected to use a rotunda or a smaller connecting street in order to turn around. That being said, driving in Managua is very intense. Roads can be very chaotic and other drivers do not always obey the rules. If you want a spot, you have to act fast. Vehicles in Managua use their horns very frequently, so you'll get beeped at a lot when you make other people wait. Police pulling you over. In Nicaragua, you'll often see checkpoints where the police are speed trapping. They're usually looking for drivers who are speeding, no matter what foreigners tell you. If you do get pulled over, you'll be asked for your license and your car registration. If they find that you did something wrong, then you'll get a fine and they'll take your driver's license to the police office. Sometimes you can avoid this by paying them around 500 Cordoba. If not, you'll have to go to the police office and pay the fine to get your driver's license back. Motorcycles tend to get pulled over more than cars, whereas public transport such as taxis and buses and shuttles are almost always ignored. So the easiest way to avoid interactions with police is to use public transport such as shuttles and buses. This is the best way. Preventing theft. You must take precautions with your money and cell phone. Pay close attention to your body language and do what you can to appear as alert as possible. If you can, travel with at least one other person. Groups of two or more are usually less likely to encounter trouble when they're walking around. To avoid getting pickpocketed in a crowd, don't wear clothing that has unprotected pockets. You really should be using things that have Velcro or zippers, as this just gives the added inconvenience that really helps prevent these problems. Don't travel with large amounts of cash or a laptop or computer unless you absolutely have to. Consider wearing a lanyard under your shirt so that you can store your money somewhere separate from the typical pocket or wallet. You really need to take care when you're on a bus, particularly a very crowded bus. Pickpockets take advantage of chaos and confusion. So places like markets, which can be very crowded, are typically a bit dangerous, especially at night. You need to be careful in the markets. If you do go to the market, then go as early as possible, probably around 8, 9 a.m. The market is safer when you go early because it's significantly less crowded. Safety while walking. Safety while walking in Nicaragua is all about the time of day, the location, and the overall look of you. The safest part in the day is during the early morning, followed by the late afternoon. There are safer neighborhoods and more dangerous neighborhoods. In the beginning, you should ask people which areas to stay away from. Usually, the more crowded, the more dangerous the area is. You'll learn to get a feel for this once you've spent some time here. Personally, I look at the dogs to gauge how safe an area is. Areas that could be dangerous tend to have dogs that are really intense and kind of aggressive and barking at everything. Whereas areas that are pretty cool, the dogs just chill. They're just like this all the time, just laying around, having a good time. You can kind of get a feel for it through the dogs. At least that's what I believe. Don't leave empty homes. The most effective way to prevent robbery is to maintain a presence in the home at all times. Avoid leaving the home empty if you can. Ideally, you want somebody living there if you are not around. 
If you must leave the house empty, do what you can to reduce the amount of people who know or can see that the home is currently unoccupied. It is common for thieves to steal from yards that are only protected by chain link fence because they can be very easily cut. So don't rely on chain link fence for security. Remember that thieves can climb walls or cut through chain link fence to get into your garden. So you need to consider what a thief can see from your garden because most thieves will not break into something unless they can see exactly what they will take. My last piece of advice is to just be good to people and treat people well. You would be surprised how often people get robbed because they offended the wrong person or treated somebody badly. Word gets around. For your own sake, be good to people, okay? Finding house rentals. Foreigners often pay five or six times the price that locals would pay to rent a place. This is unnecessary since there is an abundance of cheap real estate available in Nicaragua. To find local prices, all you need to do is walk around and look for for rent signs. Do not use the internet. You'll see signs that say se renta or se alquila. Don't look online. You'll only see foreigner prices that way. Stay at a hostel in a town in an area you're interested in and start walking the streets and writing down numbers. Find places that you feel excited about and call the numbers. Foreigners are able to rent with no restrictions. As far as I know, I've been on multiple leases. I did have one landlord who didn't want to put me on the lease because I was a foreigner, but ironically, the local ended up leaving and screwing her over. So, you know, to each their own, right? Most landlords are really just happy to put you on a lease because so few people are actually able to pay rent, so foreigners are perceived as having more money, and sometimes that will counter the whole they could leave at any time argument. Avoiding scammers. People from the street will occasionally confront you and ask you to help them. Uh, you could be in your house or walking around. These people will sometimes come to your house gate and ask you for help. They may say that, you know, they want money or valuables such as shoes and clothing. You'll hear stories about sick family members, accidents, wounds, diseases. Unfortunately, many of these people are lying. This happens more when the people from the street can see into your house and see that you're home. Um, many street workers are honest people, but not all of them. People in the street do have a tendency to overcharge or rob other people. So you have to be very careful when you're buying something from somebody directly in the street. If you don't know uh, the going rate for the goods, you could easily be charged 10 times the price that a local would pay. These are people who can benefit a lot from taking something from you and never showing their face again. So you have to be careful. Some people will be extremely pushy. This also happens with, with marriage and bring it up frequently, right? These kinds of people, you have to be really careful about. Anytime somebody's being pushy, if you feel that someone's being pushy with you, this is usually a tactic used by scammers. These kinds of extreme people are not common to meet, but they do exist, so I want to warn you about them. It's usually unwise to marry the first person you form a relationship with unless time has passed, okay? Don't rush. Take your time and be picky when you're getting into relationships, and especially if you're choosing to marry. Get to know people and marry a solid partner, not just some random person you met while you were in the rose-tinted goggles of being a foreigner here in wonderful Nicaragua. Ignoring beggars. You will see beggars in Nicaragua, especially in the city, in certain areas. You should learn these areas so you know where they are, but you don't need to avoid them entirely. 
Just because somebody is begging doesn't mean they're trying to steal from you or hurt you. You will find beggars at entrances and exits of wealthy areas such as malls, shopping centers, or stores. And if you look wealthy or foreign, then beggars are significantly more likely to ask you for money. <laughs> This will happen while you're walking, at bars, in restaurants, at your house. You do not need to give these people anything. You must learn to say no firmly once and then just ignore people. Most beggars are not going to be persistent, so don't be surprised if someone shows up at your door asking you for money, okay? In general, it's okay to give these people a bit of food, but you should not give them money. Be wary of any person telling you any story about sickness, family, or showing you any kind of wound. These are normally crocodile tears. Garbage Collection There are typically three days, maybe two, per week that the garbage truck will come and pick up all the bagged garbage on designated streets. This will vary depending on your neighborhood, but usually trash is picked up between 6 a.m. and 9 a.m. earlier in the morning. In some neighborhoods, there is a fee for the garbage truck to even come in the first place, and this fee is around $30 per year. The fee is typically paid by landowners. There are a lot of street animals in Nicaragua, so if you leave your trash out too early, then the dogs will rip it apart when the trash gets to them. And the garbage collectors will only throw away bagged trash, so they're going to ignore any trash that dogs have gone through. Usually, pickers will come through and take out the plastic and glass from trash before the garbage truck comes. And these people will happily take your empty beer cans, any glass or plastic you have to offer them. Minsa Health Department Visits The Nicaraguan Health Department is known by the name Minsa. Minsa health workers go door to door in specific neighborhoods and offer services. Usually, they focus on minimizing mosquito-borne illness, but they also offer COVID vaccination. When they visit, they will come to your front door and they will ask if they can check your house for standing water so that they can get rid of mosquito larvae. They will do this by asking you to let you in, let them in, and then show you the house's lavandero. A lavandero is a sink used to wash clothing that exists in almost any Nicaraguan house. Many Nicaraguan homes store standing water in these, and it's a known issue that they can get infested with mosquitoes. So the workers will usually write on the side of the lavandero when they visit. On separate occasions, other workers will visit and they will walk around fumigating any house in the neighborhood who lets them in. These workers will offer you fumigation services if you want them, but you can say no. They'll fumigate your house, come in, getting anywhere you point them to for free. Personally, I always say no because there are birds here and I don't like the fogging machines being anywhere near the birds. Minsa workers will also offer COVID vaccinations. In Nicaragua, COVID vaccines are available to anybody who wants one, regardless of age or residency status. I personally got vaccinated from a door-to-door -door Minsa COVID vaccination person, so yeah. Personally, I've always been treated really, really well by any of these Minsa workers. Uh, people can get iffy about letting someone into your house, but just watch them, pay attention, make sure they're not tricking you, because there are scammers who will try and get into your house faking like they're a government worker, but if you know what the actual government workers do and how they behave and that they always go to the lavandero and these things, you can tell the difference. So if one of these workers comes in and starts like looking at everything, like your valuables and shit, eh, that's not a good thing. But personally, that's never happened to me. Uh, I've always just let them into my house and it's worked out quite well. I've been treated very well. Workers in your house. Whenever possible, hire a person who is trusted by a local Nicaraguan instead of just random people. If you are working with an unknown person, you might want to consider asking them to let you take a photo of their face. 
This may sound crazy, but it really increases accountability and it keeps people honest. Don't leave valuables or wallets out in the open, especially when you have guests or any kind of party or workers in your house. Keep pocket-sized valuables in inconvenient places. It is not rare for cell phones and wallets to disappear, especially when people are drinking and distracted. Nicaraguan Banks With banking, the main restriction to be aware of is that some ATMs are Visa only while others are MasterCard only. The common banks in Nicaragua are BAC, Lefice, Banpro, and Focosa. Foreigners can be added to a bank account in a Nicaraguan's name, but most of the time foreigners themselves cannot open a bank account. However, there are some exceptions. For example, Focosa has U.S. branches, so if you are a U.S. citizen, it is possible for you to open a Nicaraguan bank account in Focosa. You can't pay utility bills with a foreign debit card, nor can you reload Nicaraguan phones directly online, which is quite inconvenient. In general, you can use any foreign debit card or credit card in all other situations. You'll be charged a foreign transaction fee that's a small percent of the purchase price, and usually this is quite affordable. The fee that adds up is actually for ATM withdrawal. You'll usually have to pay six to ten dollars to withdraw the money because the bank will charge you a fee and the ATM will also charge you a fee. You should use your debit or credit card for most transactions and only withdraw money when you're withdrawing enough to justify the withdrawal fee. Who would want to pay twenty dollars to get ten dollars, right? Sales taxes. The sales tax in Nicaragua is called IVA tax. Sometimes stores build this tax into their menu. However, many places will charge IVA in addition to the purchase price. So typical IVA is around 15%, but this changes for different goods. Food is usually closer to 5%. A Nicaraguan import tax is almost always around 15%, but vehicles are subject to a 30% import tax. If you're getting residency, you can actually import a vehicle for free. So if your car is worth $30,000, then this perk saves you $10,000 by being able to just import the car for free. Under the Dominican Republic Central Trade, or wow, under the Dominican Republic Central America Free Trade Agreement, U.S. consumer and industrial goods can enter Nicaragua tax-free. You can waive the import tax on these goods if you prove that you're importing U.S. consumer goods or U.S. industrial goods specifically for the purpose of resale within Nicaragua. Paying U.S. Income Tax the United States is one of the few countries in the world that taxes its citizens on income earned outside of the United States. If you are a U.S. citizen, you must pay income tax on the income you earn while in Nicaragua in most situations. On the plus side, you won't need to pay any Nicaraguan income tax while residing here. Nicaragua does not care about foreign assets and capital gains on property outside of Nicaragua. So US, or Nicaragua isn't going to tax you on U.S. land, online jobs, and investment accounts. However, you will need to pay taxes on your Nicaraguan assets. Any land you own in Nicaragua or any profit from that land is taxable by the Nicaraguan government. So, as long as you are generating income, you will have to continue to pay U.S. taxes and capital gains tax. And once you have property in Nicaragua, then you'll also need to pay Nicaraguan tax. In general, living in Nicaragua saves you enough money that you have more money available to pay your taxes. So you don't need to worry as much about taxes as you do in your expensive-ass current country. Foreigners getting overcharged. 
Foreigners are usually charged more for everything than local Nicaraguans. But in most of Nicaragua, this isn't something that's so excessive you need to worry about it. Outside of tourist areas, Nicaraguans are usually going to treat you quite fairly, and if they do upcharge you, it's not going to be anywhere near as much as in the tourist areas. You're rarely going to pay more for food, but you're often going to be charged more by taxis. Foreigners uh, are often taken advantage of in real estate, though. That's really the area that you should be aware of, is that foreigners get taken advantage of with rent and real estate. In Nicaragua, everything shown online is significantly more expensive than what is available through word of mouth or walking the street and finding signs. Prices in Nicaragua are so cheap that foreigners usually don't realize when they're paying double or triple the going rate. $500 a month is the maximum you should ever pay for real estate here if you're new in, into it. Unless you're looking at some really wealthy area like San Juan del Sur or something, you can get a really nice place for $500 a month in any place in Nicaragua. So if you're looking at something that's in the thousands of dollars, it's not worth it. It's not worth paying three or four thousand dollars of rent in Nicaragua. You can get an awesome situation for much less than that. You can always find something beautiful that is significantly cheaper than you would expect. Don't make purchase decisions without reviewing multiple available options. Look at multiple houses before you get on a lease with one. Places are usually uh, available for a while, so you can take your time finding a good option. PayPal in Nicaragua Nicaraguans can create PayPal accounts, but PayPal doesn't recognize Nicaraguan bank accounts. So this means that Nicaraguans can't easily access the money in their PayPal account. So in order to do this, they have to use an additional service called Payoneer. Payoneer recognizes Nicaraguan bank accounts, and you can transfer money into Payoneer from a PayPal account. So the Nicaraguan is able to access the PayPal account money by using Payoneer to transfer the money into their bank account from PayPal. Getting Cryptocurrency Cryptocurrency is not adopted in Nicaragua. Obtaining cryptocurrency is expensive for any Nicaraguan entity because they usually can't use traditional markets like Coinbase. And if they can, the tariff fee is usually over 40%. So it's quite expensive. In reality and in practice, Nicaraguans acquire cryptocurrency by purchasing cryptocurrency from people in other countries who are able to get crypto for cheaper than that 40% tariff. Websites such as Paxful serve as the medium for these transactions. The Nicaraguan will wire money to somebody in a foreign country who buys crypto and then sends it to the Nicaraguan wallet. These methods allow Nicaraguans to acquire crypto for a much more reasonable markup of around 10%. However, they constantly have to be on guard for scammers and make sure that they're working with reputable people, and that can be hard to find. Cell phones Cell phones are the most common way for a Nicaraguan person to access the internet. Believe it or not, most towns and cities in Nicaragua have 4G coverage, and most 30-year-old Nicaraguans have a cell phone with network access. Foreigners usually underestimate cell phone access in Latin America, um, but here people don't really use monthly plans. They actually just load a little bit at a time for 10 to 30 Cordoba to get the services that they want. And social media apps like Facebook, YouTube, and WhatsApp will often have free promotions where using their service doesn't use up your data. So if you have an active internet connection, you're, you're, you're set, right? These plans that are available are usually quite cheap, and uh, locals will rarely pay more than 30 or 40 Cordoba at a time. 
However, most foreigners like to use some kind of international plan, usually because they want to be able to call numbers from their base country, right? And these plans can be really expensive. They can be from like 50 to 100, 150 extra dollars a month on top of what you already pay with your carrier. So it's significantly cheaper to just purchase a Nicaraguan SIM card for like 40 Cordoba and use that inside your phone when you're here. Uh, many Nicaraguans and businesses use WhatsApp as a main means of communication. So you can almost always use WhatsApp instead of direct texts and calls. Uh, except for like banks and that kind of thing. But even then, the customer service over WhatsApp is a common thing. WhatsApp is a business platform in Nicaragua. When you need to call your home country, you can use an online phone service, such as a Skype number. Skype numbers usually cost like 5 or $8 a month, and they're often much cheaper than you trying to stick with your current plan, right? Power outages. Power outages are unfortunately common throughout Nicaragua, although in the city they're usually quite short. Power is rarely gone for multiple hours unless the electricians are working on the grid itself. Typical power outages last a few minutes to half an hour. The longest power outages usually last from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. on days where the power grid is being maintained or upgraded. With a few pieces of equipment, however, you'll be able to maintain your internet throughout these power outages and flickerings. All you need is an uninterrupted power supply, which you can buy in many stores in Nicaragua. They have a battery and enough charge to keep your modem running for a few hours. A cheap UPS costs around $40, whereas a nicer one is around $80, so it's not too expensive. Many bars and restaurants in Nicaragua also have a gasoline generator, which will kick on as soon as the power goes out. This is a common experience in places like San Juan del Sur. However, power is usually fairly stable in most Managua neighborhoods. The further you get away from Managua, or one of the bigger cities, then the, l the more often your power is going to go out. Gasoline generators are usually available for around $200, uh, but some of them are much more expensive. Maybe you can get a deal and get a cheaper one than that. Internet access and quality. Most Nicaraguans access the internet through cell phone. Cable internet is widely available in cities and large towns, and personally I use Tigo. Peak download and upload speeds are 10 to 50 megabits per second, depending on how much you pay. Uh, there are services that can get you up into the hundreds, but what's hard to find is a reliable upload speed in Nicaragua. That being said, uh, the internet usually works fine for most common applications. Um, the internet available in the city has become cheaper and cheaper. Even in the four years that I've lived here in Nicaragua, uh, every month it seems there's more and more inner infrastructure available in Managua. And Managua as a city, it, it really does seem to be catching up quite fast. Uh, when I first started here, I had to pay like $50 and I got like a 10 megabit connection. Whereas now I pay like $40 and I get a 50 megabit connection. So things have gotten better and also cheaper just in the four years that I've lived here. Internet during power outages. Most internet problems actually come from power outages, not problems with the internet itself. Usually the power will just flicker for a moment, but unfortunately this is long enough to take your modem down and cause it to restart. You can keep your internet working when the power flickers by using a UPS or an uninterrupted power supply. And then you'll also need a Nicaraguan SIM card with network capability. This will allow you to use the internet if the power has been lo out long enough that your UPS battery has died. And if you want to even be covered in that situation, then you just need to get a gasoline generator and make sure you always have gas and you'll be able to always have internet and power unless something very drastic happens. Usually when the power goes out, if you use a battery to turn your modem on, you still have internet. So you can have internet during a power outage. 
Electronic devices in the heat. Nicaragua can get very hot, and laptops and computers usually will function fine. Um, however, if you're doing high intensity tasks, such as rendering or doing any kind of gaming or working with hundreds of tabs, that kind of thing, you really need to make sure you have a fan on your computer all the time. Um, and for me, this really isn't that bad. Just try and get a quiet fan. That's the advice I can give you. But you're going to need a fan anyway, so it really just turns into you putting a fan on you and the computer. Okay. Air conditioning is available, but using it has some complications and can be really expensive. Uh, air conditioning can double or triple your electrical bill easily, right? So usually the thing you have to be more aware of is kind of dust. Um, dust can accumulate quite quickly here in Nicaragua, but that being said, just clean out your computer every six months or so, and you'll be fine. I don't really worry about the computers too much. Um, I work from a laptop every day of my life. I play games. I like this is I, I'm a computer person, but it's fine. Uh, I have been happy as a clam here in Nicaragua without air conditioning with a laptop. Just keep a fan running, and you will feel fine. Okay, your computer's gonna be okay. Common household pests. Houses are often exposed to the outdoors to maximize ventilation, so you're going to see bugs more regularly. The most common pests are ants, flies, mosquitoes, mice, and cockroaches. Snakes and tarantula tend to be common in rural areas where you're around more trees, but they're pretty rare in the city. To keep ants and cockroaches away, it's necessary to clean spills and food as soon as possible, and avoid leaving your kitchen dirty overnight, since ants are most active during the nighttime. There are pesticides that you can use to help kill bugs, but these rarely work in the long run. The only way to actively, effectively manage bugs is to keep a clean house. It's really important to clean under cabinets. And cabinets and appliances in the kitchen where food residue can accumulate. Personally, I protect the ants in my house because ants are really territorial and I like them. They actually keep the cockroaches and other bugs away. And ants are only active here in the nighttime, so they're not around when I'm up and about. They don't bother me. Cats are probably the best deterrent for mice, but Cats aren't always able to catch mice that are already there. So if you have a cat, it's going to help prevent a mouse from moving into your house, right? But don't expect a cat to just magically fix a mouse problem overnight, okay? Usually, these issues all relate to keeping food out of the way and clean, okay? As long as you do that, you're not going to have that many problems with pests. Mosquito illnesses and prevention. Mosquitoes are a serious health hazard because they spread chikungunya, Zika, malaria, and dengue. The health department in Nicaragua often sends workers to knock on people's doors and inspect houses for standing water. These workers will usually be wearing all blue. They visit each house in the selected neighborhood. Usually, their visits occur right before the rainy season or a storm. During the visit, they'll want to make sure you don't have any standing water, and if they find any, they're going to dump it. If they find a container, they'll often place mosquito-killing pellets inside the water there. This is to prevent mosquito larvae from growing and helps prevent mosquito illness outbreaks. It takes about two days for mosquito eggs to hatch and fully develop, so don't let water sit in your house. Buckets and containers should always be stored upside down if they're outside so that water from rain can't accumulate. Free fumigation services are available from the government, and you'll find workers in blue walking around fumigating, and it's free. You can just ask them to come in and fumigate your house if you want that. The fogging is primarily effective against uh, mosquitoes, and it helps produ reduce the spread of these mosquito-borne illnesses. Chikungunya, <laughs> chikungunya, chicken chikungunya, oh my god, chicken, chicken, fuck. Street dogs and street cats. 
Street animals are common throughout Nicaragua. In the city, it's normal to see dogs and some cats. Dogs attacking you is rarely a problem. However, dogs will go through the trash if you leave it out too early, so make sure you don't do that. Dogs normally won't come into your house, but cats have no problem entering your house at night. Uh, so make sure to not keep food out in the open overnight because you may find that a friendly feline comes in and eats it and maybe poops in your sink. So sometimes in some areas there are packs of street dogs. So these can be scary and chaotic, but as long as you keep your distance, they're going to leave you alone. In general, dogs are only a threat when you are intruding on their territory. So if you are just one of many people passing a dog, they're not going to give you any attention. Dogs are often used in Nicaragua as alarms and protection, so you should be careful around dogs when you're in somebody's house or you're in a private residence. In Nicaragua, a dog who bites an intruder is a valuable asset. Good pay for locals. A college-educated Nicaraguan with work experience can expect to earn $600 to $800 per month working full-time. Well-paying positions pay more than this, up to $1,000 or more, but they're not very common. You should pay people well if you can. Locals will benefit from you, and you can benefit from them. If you pay a Nicaraguan $5 an hour, you are paying them competitive college-level income. It isn't hard to find a highly motivated worker at that point. Nicaraguans do tend to be more laid back and will often take their time. Therefore, you should not be uh, expecting them to be in a rush for you. It's normal for a plumber, painter, electrician to show up later than expected. Punctuality can be a bit rare, so if you do find somebody who is punctual, make sure to value that, okay? Pay people well. Ways to get residency. Simplified, there are three ways to acquire residency in Nicaragua. You can retire here, you can invest here, or you can get married. Residency is granted to retirees totally for free in certain conditions. You must be over the age of 53 and show that you receive at least 500 US dollars per month from a verifiable source of income. The income must be from a traditional source, such as real estate investment or a retirement account. Nicaraguan officials are very supportive of families, and if you are willing to marry, they will be much more understanding of whatever situation you are in. You'll be eligible to apply for residency two years after the date of the marriage, and you must be living together during that period. Another option is to purchase a Nicaraguan asset. If you make a purchase of $30,000 or more from a Nicaraguan entity, then you can get Nicaraguan residency for free with that purchase. These purchases can be real estate or investments. Many people stay on tourist visas until they gain residency. And if you choose to do this, then overstaying your visa will cost you $3 per day, and this fee must be paid in order for you to leave the country. With the fees of post-COVID travel, uh, paying your overstaying fee can actually often be a cheaper option. Retirement Options Nicaragua offers a path to residency to entice retirees to move to Nicaragua. To be eligible for residency, you must have a verifiable income of $500 per month. You can claim dependents and get your family member's residency as well. You'll need an additional $200 per month of this verifiable income for each dependent that you claim. So if you claim yourself and your spouse, then you need $700 of verifiable income. 
Managua is my absolute favorite place to be in Nicaragua. The city has some beautiful neighborhoods to offer and beautiful gardens are abundant, especially in the wealthier neighborhoods. Cars are not necessary to access food, dental care, and medical care. Coffee shops and local restaurants are available, often within walking distance, in the wealthier neighborhoods in Managua. There are many retired, retired communities in the rest of Nicaragua. Nicaragua is a popular option in Latin America because of its relative safety and cheap costs. So there are specific towns in Nicaragua that are known for having large amounts of foreign retirees. San Juan del Sur and Granada are examples of the, these kinds of places. However, these areas are also significantly more expensive. You'll be able to find the exact same luxuries available to you in these places for much cheaper in Managua. So consider checking Managua out. Moving your family. It's possible to have a good life here in Nicaragua whether you are single or a family of five. I moved here single, but I've talked directly with three or four families who have successfully moved their whole families here. Look and post in the comments of this video and try to find another family who has moved to Nicaragua. That way you can talk directly with someone who has done what you're considering, right? Uh, I also advise you to check out the Facebook group Expats in Nicaragua as this is a really good way to meet other families that already live here and they're going to be the people who can really alleviate your concerns the most. Getting residency in Nicaragua as a retiring head of household also gives residency also gives residency to all of your dependents. So check out the section on acquiring residency to learn more about that process. Treatment of black people. As a foreigner, you will almost always get to see people's best side. In general, black people here in Nicaragua are treated better than they are in the United States, especially by authority. Uh, my black friends who have visited Nicaragua have told me that the police here are really polite to them and treat them really well. So, in, in general, Nicaraguans treat foreigners really, really well regardless of the skin color, okay? I'm not saying you're never going to experience prejudice here, but it, it does seem to just be that foreigners are, are treated better and locals can treat other locals pretty badly sometimes. So. Nicaraguan people use a popular phrase from Mexico to explain this. It's called Malinche's Curse. Look it up. Political Situations and Violence There is constant negative coverage of Nicaragua in the media. You should expect your relatives to express concern, judgment, and ask questions about your state of mind whenever you're talking about spending time in Nicaragua, if you're from the United States. This is totally normal. Stay away from crowds and protests. You'll be fine. The reality is, as foreigners, it's unwise to talk about Nicaraguan politics. We are guests in this country and we must be respectful to the people here. And the situation, whatever it may be at the time of you uh, watching this video, uh, the reality is these things that happen, because they do happen time and time again, they don't really affect foreigners that much. They affect the conditions for the local Nicaraguans living here. Not so much the foreigners, okay? So that's just how it is. Sometimes you're going to hear people in the news say that the U.S. is placing sanctions on Nicaragua, but this is never actually true. Uh, the U.S. wouldn't do that. It only sanctions the individuals it doesn't like in Nicaragua. Uh, there's trade between Nicaragua and the U.S., and it doesn't limit that. So you really don't need to worry uh, about this very much because, uh, in general, these measures by other countries result in little or no change to the situation and the status quo. Public education. School hours are significantly shorter in Nicaragua. Public school days are five hours each day. High school students can even opt to go to school on one day on the weekend instead of Monday through Friday. 
many Nicaraguans will end up leaving the education system for various reasons before they, they get college educated. In a family of four to five Nicaraguan children, it's typical for one of them to remain in the education system until college. Free college education is available in Nicaragua. If you pass the entrance test, then you're eligible for free college. Tuition in most private colleges costs $100 more or less per month. And the more expensive colleges teach in English and grant US recognized degrees. These colleges cost around $500 per month. Common universities in Nicaragua include the free public universities, UNAN, UNA, UNI, and Inatec, CESM, and CS, and see the other ones on the screen. Proof of exit ticket. Sometimes it is necessary to show proof that you are leaving Nicaragua before you will be allowed to board the plane to fly to Nicaragua. This is rarely enforced by Nicaragua, but it is often enforced by US airlines. Many of these airlines will not let you onto the plane unless you're able to procure or show proof of an exit ticket. In this case, the cheapest solution is to use a refundable bus ticket, which you can change the date of whenever you want and also just get a refund on it. That way, uh, you can deal with having the exit ticket requirement without having to spend hundreds of dollars on a flight that you might not make, right? It allows you to be flexible by using a bus ticket. In general, Nicaraguan immigration doesn't really mind if you're a tourist. The thing that they care about is people who they think might be working illegally and taking a job away from a Nicaraguan or working with NGOs. As a tourist, you can't hold a job that a Nicaraguan person could get. If you cannot easily explain what you do for work, then you might have more trouble with immigration. People working with NGOs have more problems with their visas and border runs than the average tourist does. Provided you pay your fees, immigration is not harsh on you overstaying your visa. You just have to make sure you do actually pay, either before you leave or whenever they ask you to. Visa fees. A tourist visa lasts 90 days. After that, you need to pay $3 per day. It's possible to get a visa extension, but that is not always reliable to do. Most foreigners are treated very well as long as you pay your fees cheerfully, even if you overstay your visa. Bring your exit ticket to immigration a few days before your plane leaves and pay up your fee. This way, you won't have any issues boarding the plane in general, it's just easier to pay the $3 per day than all the COVID tests and traveling expenses and alternatives. You'll have to pay your fee in order to leave Nicaragua. And things usually go much smoother if you go to immigration a few days before you leave and pay up your fee. They'll stamp your passport and make you legal, and you won't have to worry about any problems at the airport when you leave. In the past, Foreigners often relied on border runs to places like Costa Rica, but uh, this doesn't really work as much anymore because of all of the uncertainty around COVID and traveling and the expenses and cancellations. So considering how much time you save, it's often just easier to pay $3 a day. Health insurance. Health insurance exists in Nicaragua, however, it's kind of unnecessary for most people. Public health care is available for all, but wait times can be kind of long and it can be quite crowded. So the cost of private health care is so low by worldwide standards that you can usually just pay a la carte without insurance, without a problem. Things like ultrasounds, x-rays, and CT scans are all available without a doctor's prescription or notice for $10 to $30 a scan. You can literally just go to a place and be like, hey, I want to get my lungs scanned, and then they'll do it, right? If you suffer from diabetes, obesity, or high blood pressure, then you'll find access to most of the drugs you need because these conditions are quite common here in Nicaragua. 
You'll also find plentiful access to the sugary beverages that cause them, such as soda, which is often cheaper than bottled water here. In general, good quality is... Oh, in general, good quality surgery can be a bit hard to find here, so usually Nicaraguans prefer to get surgery abroad. If you're expecting to require surgery, then you might want health insurance from a wealthier nation so that you can access good quality surgery there. Medical care. The prices of uninsured private health care are affordable in Nicaragua. It's viable to live here without medical insurance because of the low cost of private health care and medication. Most locals rely on free government services, whereas those who formally pay taxes on their income get health insurance and they're allowed to go to a private hospital. Public hospitals treat almost anybody, and this is where you would usually be treated if you were to break a bone. If you have a rare condition or expect to require surgery, you may have a hard time finding what you need. High quality surgeries are not easily available in Nicaragua. Most political leaders and other individuals will get surgeries in another country. Access to medications. There is wide availability of most common medications for heart disease and diabetes. Any generic medication that is available overseas is generally easily obtainable in Nicaragua. Newer patented medications can be hard to find and are significantly more expensive. Pharmacies in the cities often require prescriptions, while the ones in more suburban areas often don't require any. These restrictions can vary a lot by pharmacy and medication. Uh, in general, generic medication prices range from 5 to 20 Cordoba per pill. So you rarely will be paying more than $1 per pill. And there's wide variety of access to pharmacies as it's one of the most common kinds of businesses. There's few cities or streets in Nicaragua that aren't close by to at least one pharmacy. Dental care. Private dental care is widely available in the cities. Usually, private dental care is of good quality and it's cheap. So you can rely on the dentists in the city if you need a typical procedure. Sometimes you'll find dentists that are retired from the US or some other country. So don't worry too much about it. You don't need health insurance here in Nicaragua and most people don't use it. Private dental care procedures cost around 20 to $40 without insurance. And this is for stuff like getting a cleaning or getting your tooth pulled. However, these prices do vary by region and sometimes it may be as cheap as $10 a procedure or as expensive as $100. Any dentist you go to is going to charge you significantly less than a dentist in the United States. Loneliness as a foreigner. Some foreigners do feel very lonely living here in Nicaragua. The best thing that you can do to avoid these problems with loneliness is to practice your Spanish and try and get romantic. Loneliness will resolve itself in a matter of time as there is a significant amount of social comfort available from Nicaraguan people. That being said, there's usually a pattern foreigners go through when they move to Nicaragua. First, there's a period of excitement. Everything's fascinating. The rose-tinted goggles are full blare, right? And then after that, there's a crash, a, a period of, of feelings of isolation and loneliness and missing the home country and that one brand of whatever you like that you can't get, right? And then, the third phase is just total integration. Nicaragua becomes that thing that you miss when you're away from it, right? So once you're in this integration period, you're really like a local. You feel at home here in Nicaragua. And loneliness, it's a part of the process that gets you to that point. So really, Nicaraguans are often very warm and welcoming to foreigners. 
In general, you'll be treated very well and people will want to make you feel comfortable. That being said, Nicaraguans can't be friendly with you if you don't even give them the chance. If you don't, if you don't go out, you're not going to meet anybody. If you want to meet people, you'll need to go to various events, at bars, sports, and participate in holiday festivities and any kind of just local Nicaraguan thing. If you like going to church, you can find tons of friends here. People like going to church here. I think. <laughs> Romantic relationships. Dating is the best way to integrate yourself into Nicaragua. You will meet people and their friends, and this will grow your network. Getting comfortable will take months to years, but you'll be less likely to get taken advantage of in the future, okay? I can't tell you what your dating experience is going to be like. You could attract good people or you could attract bad people. There are people here who will love you deeply for who you are, and then there are also people who will leave you the second you lose some of your money. If you want a supportive relationship with meaningful connection, then you will have to be patient and have some luck, just like in any other country. Dating age gaps. Usually, it is acceptable to marry somebody for a better life financially. If you want to meet a younger wife or husband here in Nicaragua, that is absolutely possible. Many men and women in Nicaragua are looking for a better life. However, you'll have to be patient to find somebody who values you as much as your money, right? Your experience dating younger or older people in Nicaragua is also going to vary a lot by location. Tourist areas have plenty of young women who are just trying to get hitched to a rich man. However, in non-tourist areas, it's not as common to meet people who are that into it, right? So, if you feel like people are being too false, then try spending some more time in Managua instead of the tourist areas, and you might find some more genuine connections with people there. In general, what's important to Nicaraguans is that you are married. If you are dating someone much younger than you, then that's not really a problem if you're married. You're going to be judged sometimes, but not that much really. However, if you're dating someone much younger than you and you're not married, that can be more of a problem. That's judged more frequently, okay? Once you show serious... Marriage in Nicaragua. There are two kinds of marriage in Nicaragua, legal marriage and religious marriage. Most Nicaraguan weddings have a priest and a lawyer in order to do both of these marriages at the same time. However, plenty of Nicaraguans get married for business reasons and don't have a religious marriage. To get married in Nicaragua, you'll need an apostled birth certificate from your country, a police report from Managua, your passport, and the local Nicaraguans' documentation. You'll be eligible to apply for residency two years after the date that your marriage is filed. You must be living together for the entirety of this period of time. And it is also possible to get married while on an expired visa. In general, overstaying your visa is acceptable in the name of family, provided you pay your fees. Marrying in Nicaragua is seen as an important part of life. For most Nicaraguans, their children will not live outside of the house until they get married. Many people here will feel uh, offended if you're dating for a year or two and not interested in marriage. That being said, you should take significant caution before getting married. How I met my fiancé. It was the beginning of the COVID pandemic. After living in Nicaragua for a few years, I'd built up a deal of loneliness. I knew that I would be a stronger person with a loving partner in my life, but I hadn't really been able to find someone I felt a strong bond to it. 
I wanted to find that, but I wasn't really sure how to. Uh, I felt that people value the wrong things in relationships and kind of doom them to fail in the long run, so I just kind of stayed away from them. One day, I made a YouTube video that had my contact information. It was about COVID, ironically. My fiance, Alex, saw that video and reached out to me. We met up at a bar near her house and talked for a while. We started living together around nine months after that. My life changed a lot once she moved in. I felt complete and motivated to build a better life, not only for her, but also for myself. That being said, I got really lucky. I found somebody who genuinely wants to, to know me inside and out and is creative and is very like me. Alex tries to understand me and listens to me and supports me. Um, together, we really enable each other to live more genuine, creative lives. But this kind of relationship is pretty rare. You shouldn't expect to find somebody you can relate to very quickly. These things can take a really long time. You're going to meet multiple people before you really find somebody who's really good for you and able to love you effectively. So take your time, okay? Talk with Jack. So the best thing you can do to give back to me is to share this video with somebody else that you know who's interested in Nicaragua and to give the video a like. These things will really help me out. That being said, this content doesn't have any kind of paywall. I just gave you guys absolutely everything that I know about Nicaragua and I'm not asking for anything in return. That being said, I do have something else of value I can offer you that I will charge you for, okay? If you want to talk to me directly, it costs $20 for a 30-minute conversation, and I will talk to you specifically about any kind of fears that you have about Nicaragua, and I will share any experience I have relevant to exactly what you want to learn about living in this beautiful country. If you want to book one of these calls with me, then go to the Calendly link, Jack Dermot Pittman, and it's available at the top link in the description, okay? From here, you're going to be able to book a call. It's $20 per 30-minute conversation. Support Jack for the course. If you do want to show me some support, then you can also use my PayPal Me link, a $10 a $10 tip is really, really appreciated. And any kind of contribution that you guys give allows me to really focus more on this kind of content, where I pour myself for multiple months into a single video instead of just making a bunch of different videos. Send me some money on PayPal or give this video a like and share it somewhere that you know it's going to get watched. If you can uh, get my average view duration up and have people engaging, commenting, and liking, you're supporting me. So if you can't support financially, maybe that's a better option. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope that you get to spend some time in this beautiful country known as Nicaragua.